So what exactly is the mole? What does that represent? In chemistry, it doesn't represent the animal. It represents a number. To illustrate it, think of a dozen. When you hear the word dozen, what do you think of? A dozen equates to 12. A dozen eggs mean you have 12 eggs. A dozen calculators is 12 calculators. A mole is similar to a dozen. A dozen is equal to 12, but a mole represents a much larger number. A mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So if you have a mole of pens, you have 6 times 10 to the 23 pens. If you have a mole of pennies, you have 6 times 10 to the 23 pennies. But typically, the mole is associated with a very small particle, like an atom, a molecule, a formula unit within an ionic compound, things like that. Now, this number, 6 times 10 to the 23, that is also known as Avogadro's number. So what do we use this for? Typically, you would use this for a conversion problem. Let's say if you know the number of moles of carbon atoms, you can calculate the number of carbon atoms. So let's say if we have four moles of carbon atoms, how can we convert it to the number of atoms? So let's start with what we have, four moles of carbon over one. Now, based on the conversion that we wrote before, one mole is equal to Avogadro's number which instead of writing 6.02, I'm just going to round it to 6 times 10 to the 23. And this is atoms of carbon. So what's 4 times 6 times 10 to the 23? 4 times 6 is equal to 24. So we have 24 times 10 to the 23. Now, if we move the decimal point one unit to the left, this becomes 2.4 times 10 to the 24. If you want your answer in scientific notation, this number must be between 1 and 10. It can be equal to or greater than 1, but less than 10. Another way you can see it is you can view 24 as 2.4 times 10. And we still have the 10 to the 23rd. So if you multiply 10 to the 1 by 10 to the 23rd, you need to add the exponents. And that's why it changed to 24. So whenever you move the decimal point one unit to the left, the exponent will increase by one. So that's how many carbon atoms we have in this particular problem. Now you need to know when to use words like atoms, molecules, or formula units. If you have carbon, zinc, neon, these are composed of atoms. If you have uh, H2, H2O, C6, H6, these are composed of molecules. A molecule is a particle that has multiple atoms. Now, if you see something like sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, even though it has multiple atoms, it's made up of ions. Whenever you have a metal and a nonmetal, it's an ionic compound. And so, therefore, you would use the term formula units when dealing with molar conversions. So, let's say if we have five moles of methane, convert it into molecules of methane because CH4 is a molecule. It's a particle that has multiple atoms. Molecules are usually made up of nonmetals. Carbon and hydrogen are nonmetals. If we had a metal and a nonmetal, it would be ionic and we would use the term formula units. So convert this into molecules of CH4 and also atoms of hydrogen. So let's start with the first part. So we have 5 moles of CH4 over 1. And using Avogadro's number, one mole is equal to 6 times 10 to the 23. So we have 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Now you want to set it in such a way that these units, they cancel. 
So now we can multiply 5 times 6. 5 times 6 is 30. So we have 30 times 10 to the 23. And if we move the decimal one unit to the left, the answer is 3.0 times 10 to the 24 molecules of CH4. Now, how can we answer the second part of the question? How can we convert molecules of CH4 into atoms of hydrogen? One molecule of CH4 contains four atoms of hydrogen. So we got to take our answer and multiply it by four. So five times four is 20. 20 times 6 is 120. So we have 120 times 10 to the 23. So if we take the decimal point move it two units to the left, this is the same as 1.2 times 10 to the 25 atoms of hydrogen. So sometimes you may need to take it another step if you want to go from molecules to atoms. Now, Let's try another example. Let's say if we have four moles of aluminum chloride. How many formula units of aluminum chloride are there? And also, how many chloride ions are in this sample? So let's start with the first part. So four moles of AlCl3 over one. So let's convert it to formula units. One mole of AlCl3 is equal to 6 times 10 to the 23 formula units. And the reason why we use the term formula units for this compound is because aluminum chloride is composed of ions. It's an ionic compound. Aluminum is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal. Whenever you have that, it's represented in formula units. So this is going to give us the first answer. Notice that the unit moles of AlCl3 cancel. So 6 times 4 is 24. So 24 times 10 to the 23 is the same as 2.4 times 10 to the 23 formula units. Now, to find the next answer, the number of chloride ions, we could say that there are 3 chloride ions per 1 formula unit of AlCl3. So 2.4 times 3, that's going to be 7.2. So we have 7.2 times 10 to the 23 chloride ions. And so sometimes you just need to take it an extra step further. Now what about working backwards? So if we have 5 times 10 to the 24, actually let's say 3 times 10 to the 24 atoms of hydrogen. How can we convert it into moles of hydrogen? So if you want to go from atoms or molecules or formula units to moles, here's what you need to do. Start with the number that you have. Over 1. And then use Avogadro's number. But this time, instead of being on top, it's going to be on the bottom. On top, we're going to have the unit one mole of hydrogen. So notice that the unit atoms cancel. And so we just got to divide by Avogadro's number. If you want to go from atoms, molecules, or formula units back to moles. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 3 over 6 is 1 half. So we have 1 over 2 times 10 to the what power? So notice that we have 10 to the 24 divided by 10 to the 23. When you divide a common basis, you need to subtract. 24 minus 23 is 1. So this is half times 10. Half of 10 is 5. So we have 5 moles of hydrogen. 
Now the next thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to calculate the molar mass of a compound. Let's say if you want to find the molar mass of C2H6. To do so, you need to use the periodic table. In a periodic table, the atomic mass for carbon is 12, but there's two of them. And for hydrogen, it's 1, and there's 6. So you get 24 plus 6, which is 30. You can say 30 atomic units, or more commonly, 30 grams per mole. Go ahead and find the molar mass for the following compounds. Feel free to pause the video as you work out these examples. Sodium has an atomic mass of 23, and for oxygen it's 16, for hydrogen it's 1. So if we add these numbers, we're going to get 40 grams per mole. Now what about glucose, C6H12O6? So we have six carbon atoms, each with an atomic mass of 12, 12 hydrogen atoms, and six oxygen atoms, each with an atomic mass of 16. 6 times 12 is 72, and 6 times 16 is 96. 72 plus 12, that's 84. 84 and 96, that's 180. So the molar mass is 180 grams per mole. Now, you can use the molar mass to convert from grams to moles. So let's say if we have 34 grams of ammonia. Go ahead and convert that into moles. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the molar mass of NH3. Nitrogen is 14 and plus 3 for the 3 hydrogen atoms. So the molar mass is 17. So start with what you have, 34 grams of NH3. Now the molar mass is 17 grams per mole. So what that means is that one mole of NH3 has a mass of 17 grams. So you want to set it in such a way that grams cancel and you get moles on top. So 34 divided by 17 is 2. So it's 2 moles of NH3. That's how you can convert from grams to moles. You simply have to take the mass and divide it by the molar mass. Now let's try working backwards. How can you use the molar mass to convert back to grams? So let's say if we have 3 moles of neon. Convert it to grams of neon. So let's start with what we're given. 3 moles of Ne over 1. Now the atomic mass of neon is simply, it's about 20. So what that means is that 20 grams of neon is equal to one mole of neon. And so the units cancel, and since we have two numbers on top, we need to multiply. So it's 3 times 20, which equals 60 grams of neon. Now let's make sense of it. Let's understand what the molar mass really is. The molar mass is the ratio between grams and moles. So the molar mass of neon is 20. So as we said, one mole of neon is equal to 20 grams of neon. That means 2 moles of neon is equal to 40 grams of neon. And so therefore 3 moles of neon is equal to 60 grams of neon, which is the answer to the question. So that's another way you can uh, solve that problem. So how can we convert from grams to atoms? So let's say if we have 12 grams of helium gas. How many helium atoms do we have? So if you want to go from grams to atoms, you need to convert grams to moles, moles to atoms. If you think you know how to do this, feel free to pause the video and work out this example, and then unpause it when you're ready to see the solution. So let's start with 12 grams of helium, and let's convert it to moles. The molar mass of helium in a periodic table is about 4. So there's 4 grams of helium per 1 mole. And the way we set it up is we set up in such a way that grams cancel. So now let's convert moles to atoms. We know that 1 mole 
is equal to 6 times 10 to the 23, the same way as a dozen represents 12. So the unit moles cancel. So now let's do the math. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 3 times 6 is 18. So it's 18 times 10 to the 23. So if we move the decimal one unit to the left, this is the same as 1.8 times 10 to the 24 atoms of helium. So now you know how to convert from grams to atoms. Now what about going backwards? Atoms to grams. So let's say if we have 9 times 10 to the 24 atoms of, let's choose argon. Convert that to the grams of argon. So let's start with what we're given, 9 times 24. 9 times 10 to the 24 atoms over 1. So if you want to go from atoms to moles, you need to put Avogadro's number on the bottom so that the unit atoms will cancel. And so we're going to have one mole of argon on top. So the unit atoms will disappear. Now the last thing we need to do is convert moles to grams. So the molar mass of argon is like 39.95, but we're going to round it to 40. So there's 40 grams of argon for every mole of argon. So these units will cancel. So now we can do the math. So it's, let's break down 9 into 3 times 3. And 40, let's make it 20 times 2. And we have a 6 on the bottom, a 10 to the 23 on the bottom, and on top we have 10 to the 24. Now, notice that 3 times 2 is equal to 6, so we can cancel these numbers. So on top, what we have left over is 3 times 20, which is 60. And now we can divide 10 to the 24 by 10 to the 23, which is 10 to the first power. 24 minus 23 is 1. So we have 10 to the 1. So we can leave the answer as 600 grams, or we can move the decimal one unit to the left and say it's 6 times 10 to the 2 grams. But 600 grams is a nice number, so we'll go with that. So we have 600 grams of argon. So now you know how to convert from atoms to grams. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.